In this demonstration, I'll be using a 12 volt battery charger, a high output Craftsman Sears 12 volt battery charger is capable of putting out 225 amps and uh, we'll be using that as our power supply. Alright, here's a good thing to know. When I say voltage, what is voltage? When I say it's capable of putting out 225 amps, what is amps? Well, let me start with the amps. Amps is the current. The current flowing through a conductor like water flowing down a river. So, current is the flow across the conductor. Volts is the pressure behind the current. So, volts is what is pushing the current down the river, down the conductor. Voltage, current, and resistance. The electricity moving through a wire or other conductor consists of its voltage, V, its current, I, and its resistance, R. Electrical voltage is the potential or pressure. It's like the amount of water pressure in a hose. The potential energy is called voltage. Its unit of measurement is volts. Electrical current. The flow of electrons is called current. Its unit of measurement is the amper or amp. Electrical current is like the rate that water flows through a hose. Resistance. An ohm is the unit of measurement of electrical resistance. A conductor like a piece of metal has its atoms so arranged that electrons can readily pass around the atoms with little friction or resistance. A non-conductor or poor conductor, the atoms are so arranged as to greatly resist or impede the travel of the electrons. This resistance is similar to the friction of the hose against the water moving through it. Water passing through a valve that's partially closed or restricted is a good example as well. It restricts the flow of current. If you take a bucket and you just dump the water out of it, there's very little restriction. But if you put it through a hose, there's a restriction. Comparison with the hose. If you compare water to DC circuit, the pressure can be compared to the voltage and measured in volts. The rate that the water flows through the hose is compared to the current and is measured in amps. The friction, like a valve that's partially closed, any kind of resistance, if you take and kink the hose, for example, that's compared to the resistance in a circuit, and that's measured in ohms. The water analogy. Here's a simple diagram that I drew up. It looks very simple, however, it took me, it seems like a million times redoing this to try to make a good example for you guys. But as you can see on the left, I have what's supposed to be a water tower. In that water tower, you can see I have a valve, well, you got the water tower, it's filled with water, and it has a pipe that leads down to a valve that's closed. And as you can see, I have a pressure gauge there that's reading 12 PSI. So that means the head pressure, the water in that tank, is putting 12 pounds of pressure on top of that valve. That water tank can be compared to a 12 volt battery, as you can see on the right. And the valve that's closed is stopping the flow of water from flowing down that pipe, which that valve can be compared to uh, the normal open contacts on the circuit to the right. That's stopping the electrons from flowing through the circuit. What if we take and we open that valve? What you see just happen when you open that valve, you got a high flow. A lot of current flowing through that, pre through that pipe and there's a lot of pressure. There's no restriction in that pipe and it's going out at full pressure. What you're doing is putting all the pressure current, it's flowing at its max as fast as it can through that pipe to ground. Now what if you did that to an electrical circuit? Now if anybody watching knows electrical circuits, what we just did is very bad. We just put all that pressure and current directly to ground. 
that's a short circuit. Something bad is going to happen. As you can see, that wire is starting to heat up. We're creating all kinds of heat. It cannot, you cannot be putting pressure to ground. You don't want voltage going to ground. That's a short circuit. What's eventually going to happen, either that battery is going to go dead, or something bad is going to happen, or whatever protects that circuit is going to open, and hopefully have a fuse sized correctly to open that circuit before the conductor, the wire, melts. So what do you do to prevent that? Well, you put a restriction. And as you can see, what I used as a resistance, you put a resistance in the circuit. But what you can see, I restricted the flow of water in the pipe by installing another valve and only opening it partially. I just have it cracked open. So what you can see, I just slowed down that current. The current is very slow. I got a lot of pressure on the back side of that valve. There's a lot of pressure right here, but the current is very slow, low current, flowing down through the other side. And what I also did, as you can see in this next slide, I dropped all the pressure. I no longer had pressure or voltage going to ground. I no longer have water pressure going to ground. I have current. There's very little current flowing back to ground, but there's no pressure. I just took as you can see, I still have all this head pressure on the back side of this valve that's partially open. I have 12 PSI, but I have no pressure on the other side because it's not filling up that pipe to create pressure. So I have current, very little current, and no pressure. Okay, so what do we do to the electrical circuit to prevent all that pressure or voltage going to ground? Well, we simply add a resistance. For example, I added a light bulb that has 10 ohms of resistance. So it's a 10 ohm light bulb. And as you can see, what just happened with the gauges, if you look at the top conductor, it has 12 volts, flows down to the light bulb. The light bulb has the resistance, so it's putting a load on that circuit. It's putting a resistance. It's stopping the pressure. It's using all the pressure. The pressure drops on the back side of the circuit to 0 volts. And it's using and it slowed the current down to 1.2 amps. So the current flow is, since it's being restricted, slowed the current flow down and uh, dropped all the voltage. So that's an example of a very good circuit. It's dropping all of its voltage. All right, as you can see here, I just opened the circuit after the resistance. After the light bulb, I opened the circuit. And as you can see, I have 12 volts on the opposite side of that resistance. You might be saying, well, why is that? How come, you know, why isn't that a short? Well, your circuit needs a complete path. A circle, a circuit is a circle, essentially. And that's its definition. Hence why it's called a circuit. So, let me compare that to the water circuit. As you can see, I just added another valve on the front side of our restricted valve. And what you see just happened, the water can no longer flow. The you know, the current can no longer flow to ground. So I stopped the current. Therefore, this the center pipe here filled up with water and it has 12 pounds of pressure because I still have 12 pounds of head pressure in this tank. Therefore, it, fl it flowed by. The current flowed through the restrict the resistance, just like it flowed through the light bulb, filled up this pipe, just like it filled up this conductor, but it has nowhere to flow the valve is closed, therefore I have 12 PSI after the resistance. And that holds true in the circuit as well. Let's look at this at an, in another form. I'm going to be using a sort of simulator. Let's take a look. What I'm using here is a free circuit simulator. It's called the Circuit Construction Kit. And um, let me just bring up the website here. It's PHET Interactive Simulations. I'll leave a link to it in the description of this video and it's uh, free to use and I have some really good information and you guys can play around with it. Okay, so let's build that circuit in this simulator. I'm going to grab, grab a battery. I got the electrons turned off for now but you can actually turn the electron electrons on. It's a really cool feature and we'll fire them up in a little bit. So let's grab a conductor, a wire. Actually while we're here let's change the value, the voltage of this battery to well, that way we're on the same scale. 
and then I'm going to actually show the value. All right, let's add a switch. Another conductor. Pretty much just making a circuit. And uh, try to make it clean so it's easier to easier to read, easier to follow, I should say. As you know, this is a very bad circuit. This is actually a short circuit. So actually, let's remove this one wire before we get too far ahead of each other, ahead of ourselves. This is the original circuit in an electric schematic. The switch is open, so it can't can't flow. The water can't flow past this. The electrons can't flow past this point because that valve, that switch is open. So, as you'll see, when I fire the circuit up, I have 12 volts of pressure. I have voltage. If I take an amp meter and I clamp this wire, I have zero amps because there's no current. Because as you know, it, a circuit is a circle and it needs to be continuous in order for current to flow. So there's no current flowing through the circuit because the circuit is open. Let me throw the switch back open. Let's connect our meter for now. And throw this conductor back in. And now like you like I illustrated before, an assimilator should act the same way. If I throw this switch, something bad should happen. Because this is a short circuit. This is something you're not supposed to see. And I'll even throw this meter on here too. These wires are all connected to each other. You see from point A to point B, you shouldn't have a voltage on a single wire. The voltage should drop on the load side. If voltage goes to ground, it's a short, short circuit. And we have no fuses to protect this circuit, so something bad should happen. Let's see what happens. And like we said, if you look at the amps here, there are over 6,000 amps, and I have voltage on this wire. My voltage didn't drop. So that means I'm putting voltage to ground. And that's an example of a short. So let's open that circuit. Disconnect our, our voltage meter for now. We can leave the amp meter hooked up. Let's take and remove that conductor and install a light bulb. Okay. Now we got this light bulb hooked up, and I'm going to hook the the voltmeter on the opposite side of the resistance to load, and we're still on this single wire. And I'm going to show you and prove that all the voltage should drop on the opposite side of the load. So let's fire it up and it should drop the amps down to one point something because this is a 10 ohm I showed a value this is a 10 ohm resistor so with ohm's law for ohm's law to come up with the amps you take your voltage and you divide it by the resistance. So we have 12 volts divided by 10. 1.2. As you can see, I just drew the circuit closed, and we have 1.2 amps. Let me turn on the electrons, and as you can see, they're flowing really slow. Let me show you how the electrons flow in that short circuit. Let's take and uh, remove the light bulb, pull this out, hook these two conductors together. Probe this somewhere on here. And look how fast that current is flowing. That current is 
hauling. So you have a really high amp reading because that current is flying. This is a short circuit. Your current should not be that high. Contacts in that switch are smaller than the conductor wire. So it's finding its weakest link in that circuit. And it's, it's burning it up because it's not being protected. So let's take and uh, split this junction, reinstall the light bulb. So I got the light bulb reinstalled, and as you can see, it slowed down. They put a resistance on there, therefore it slowed down the flow. The current dropped to 1.2 amps. And as you can see, I have voltage 12 volts on the front side of the I got pressure on the front side of the light bulb the resistance but on this side it should have dropped all the voltage as you can see it did I have no voltage going to ground that's a good circuit it's dropping all the voltage and just leaving the current to flow back and continue the circle I hope that helps and I hope that makes sense so that's a quite a bit of information so study that and um, let me know what you think and I hope I hope you guys are enjoying it. Have a good one guys.